Hey guys and welcome back to VR Essentials. So today we're exploring a very cool topic whether the MetaQuest 3 Airlink is worth the money in using it for PC wireless VR. So basically Airlink, just for those who are not quite sure what it is, it enables you, it's an option, a software inside of the MetaQuest 3. All you have to do is download the software from the website into your desktop and then pair it with a special code that they give you. Very easy to do, very self-explanatory. You'll get it done in two seconds, literally. But do hit the notification bell after you subscribe as I will be providing you a how to do step-by-step -step, probably tomorrow in the video itself. But anyway, is it worth it? I'm gonna be trying it for the very first time today, giving you my honest opinion after using the Pico 4, the Biomax Crystal, the DPVR E4 4K, and the HP Reverb G2 using an RTX 480, which is this one here. Let me just show you guys. So the RTX here, 480 with the i7 14th gen, everybody. This is the brand new machine. So yeah, so I paired it with the Airlink and um, I'm going to give you my thoughts. I'm going to tell you whether it's worth it or whether perhaps you should purchase virtual desktop which equally has great rave reviews by the community. I haven't used it on the MetaQuest 3 yet though, so do hit the notification bell after you subscribe for the full review of Virtual Desktop using the MetaQuest 3. But I have used it for the Pico 4, and I have used it for the Quest 1, not the Quest 2 as I never tried the Quest 2, well only for 5 minutes but it doesn't really count. So. Yeah, so very excited to know how it performs versus real PC VR. I will, of course, do side-by-side -side videos versus virtual desktop versus PC VR and versus also this machine here. Let me just show you very quickly, which is my current RTX 2070, everybody, with the i7 9th gen chip. Not the i14, the 14th gen chip, which is on the 4080. So I will be doing benchmarking and comparison videos with all those various different graphics cards. Excuse me. So it gives you an idea as to whether you spend a thousand dollars or 900 US dollars for a brand new computer that's a bit less beefed up. What are what are the expectations versus spending 3,000 US dollars or around there? for a more up-to-date computer, then at least you'll be able to know what to do. All right, guys, let's go and test out. We're testing two apps today for the purpose as they're both very different in terms of graphics. Uh, one of them is a much more simpler kind of type and the other one is much beefy. Of course, I'm talking about Superhot versus Half-Life Alex. Who's gonna win in today's showdown? You just gotta watch until the end of this video. All right, let's jump into VR, everybody. So once you see this pop-up here on the screen, all you have to do is go to your settings, go to system, and then look for Quest Link here. And then you'll see, so you have to switch on this here, access PC VR apps with Air Link or a link cable here, and then launch Quest Link. So you just click on this, and then you will see, it will try to um, find your PC that's available in the facility of your actual install. So you just click on the PC there, and then you click on pair. So make sure that this again is on. Enable air link will disable link cable. Okay, so you click on yes because you want air link, not the link cable. And then you click on pair. So now it gives you a number here inside of your VR headset. So if you just bring this, if I was just to bring it here, for example, there we go. And then you see the number is there. So you just double check that the number here for me is this number. And then you have that number there. And then you can take your mouse and then click on confirm on the screen. And then it says Airlink pairing, pairing code confirm, put on your headset to continue. So the great thing is that because we are in mixed reality, I can keep my headset on. So then you click on continue here. There we go. So again, it says connecting, but it says missing requirements, which is a bit strange. Again, before we click launch, make sure that this is uh, enabled again. So there we go. Let's click on launch. And now it says confirm boundary. So we can confirm the boundary or you can create a boundary. Now everything's gone dark, which is completely normal. And what will happen is that your Airlink menu 
is now up and running. So we're inside. The middle here is still trying to parse itself. Of course, we're a bit far from the router at the moment. And we're going to change rooms because I want to show you the quality of what things are like when you're right next to the router versus one when you're away about 10 meters with a door and a wall in between as well. So you have all the various different menu here. So I will go through the menu one by one uh, in a future video. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe. But basically what we need to do um, is we need to uh, activate. This is to, I believe, to go back. So if I click on this, oh, there we go. Sorry, it's not to go back, it's to change the actual settings. So you can change the settings uh, of your, your bit rate of what's actually going to be streaming. So for us, we're going to bump it up all the way to 180. Uh, so bitrate applied. If everything looks OK, select Keep Changing. So we'll keep changes. And of course, I'm going to go back next towards the actual router itself, as I mentioned. So you can quit and go back to your home here. So I was right. Uh, so now what we need to do basically is go to our Steam. We can also click on the plus to see exactly uh, we can actually choose a specific software that is already open. So we're going to close the Logitech so it can save some space inside of the actual computer in just a moment. So Setup Touch, we don't want to do this. Uh, if you see this on the screen, because this will set up the Oculus Rift stuff, and you just don't want to be doing this. This is not something that you want to set up, to be honest with you. So this, no need to do it unless you have a Rift. So we just click that off. And then we're going to go down here or we can, yeah, I can access from here. So let me just close this because we don't need it. And let me make sure it's closed. Okay, so we're going to use the mouse. And luckily you can see your thing. So let me just close this. There we go. Let me just close this as well. There we go. And uh, also let me close this. So we make sure that we have as much things, less things running as possible. And now we're going to run our Steam. So we're going to, Steam is already on. So what we need to do is we need to actually run our Steam VR. So let me just go to library. Of course, you can create a uh, Steam VR link on your on your taskbar or something to make it easier. So let me just type Steam VR. There we go. And then we're going to launch that first because it's better to launch the actual games from Steam VR itself. And I'm going to show you something, a little trick. Uh, because you're going to see that we're going to try and run an app, but unfortunately the app is not going to load from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into let's see just a moment. There we go, desktop. Sorry, not screen. So we're going to open the Oculus app first. So let me open it. So you want to go to the settings here, and the first thing you want to do is go to general, and for unknown sources, make sure that this is switched on because if it's not switched on, what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to see the games. They're going to be considered to be unknown source inside of the actual uh, Oculus app. Um, so, or MetaQuest Airlink here, where we are. Um, so make sure that this is enabled and not disabled. This is very, very, very important. Automatic updates, I would suggest to switch this off so that you don't get any bottlenecks or anything happening like that. Rift and touch safety, we don't need this. Uh, so we can... Okay, never mind. I have to watch the video. Um, so yeah, so that's about it, really. Uh, the beta, you can switch it on if you want, but do bear in mind that it might create some issues. Um, but there are some things you will require it. So do hit the notification bell after you subscribe for future videos about that stuff. Um, and then here again, you can go to Quest 3. And then you can change some of the settings. So for example, uh, the input of the volume, the Quest 3 uh, headphones, the VR audio from computer, if you want to hear the audio both from the headset and also from the computer, so you can enable this. So if you do streaming, for example, it's quite useful. Or if you're playing with friends, it's quite useful as well, so they can hear what you're doing. Uh, and here, computer audio in VR, of course, we definitely want that. Uh, and then this tells you how much battery there is. So for me, there's about 40% left at the moment, so I do have to hurry so that I can actually start the games. It says that my computer doesn't meet the minimum specifications, which can lead to poor performance in VR. I think it's because I'm away from the router. I think that's why it thinks that. Or maybe it doesn't know that the 480 is something that's new. Not quite sure, but, you know, it's more than enough for great experience in VR. So uh, anyway, we'll, 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 see. we'll see what's what. Uh, and then also you can change your payment system and all these things. Uh, and then... Yeah, so open XR runtime. You can also set your Oculus as active. Uh, if you need to activate OpenXR, 
for any specific uh, apps as well, just FYI. All right, so let's uh, let's get out of here. And you can also fix the bitrate, but it's generally not recommended. So, um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to exit and I'm going to go inside of, uh, we're going to go into Steam again. So let me just go to desktop and then let me minimize this. There we go. I'm going to go back into Steam and we're going to launch Steam VR once more. So it's loading Steam VR, and now we're inside of Steam VR itself. So you can see I have three apps. We're going to test out Super Hot first. So uh, let me just uh, finish recording, and uh, I'll see you in just a minute. All right, guys. So first things first, we're looking at Super Hot, which is a classic VR game. Of course, one of the top ten, I would say, VR experiences must try on the quest and of course in pc vr as well as now with airlink and virtual desktop of course you can use and stream your favorite games from your pc completely wirelessly with no cables of any kind around you and this game certainly you have to you know do a lot of movements in vr 360 it's exactly like the matrix which is why it's so famous because when you move the game moves with you and the graphics in here are as you can tell not very elaborate which is why i wanted to test it with a game where first of all things don't require a lot of computational power your headset may not heat up that very uh, you know very soon uh, also you can see that when i'm moving you can see the boundary as well so i'll definitely see whether it's something that you can adjust so that you don't get to see your boundary so soon or as I'm not super close to the boundary itself. So do leave a comment below if you have any tips about boundary safety and not having to see it straight away. That would be fantastic. And yes, so in this game, you get to shoot the bad guys, punch the bad guys. You get to move your body in ways so that you make sure that you don't get shot or hit in that matter of fact. But more importantly, let's talk about the graphics. So first of all, everything seems to be very clear. I was very surprised because um, you know, there are a lot of reports on Reddit and other various different social media where people say that they see a lot of latency inside of the actual air link with some noise and some specs, speckles or dust or, you know, some kind of lines here and there. But I have to say that for me, when I was right next to the router using an XT8 uh, Asus, by the way, uh, I was really, really superbly surprised. There's just a lot of, let's say, noise around the edges of the objects, but that's pretty much it. Other than that, you know, it's very clear, very good. It just feels very digital inside. It's a bit like using a, I don't know, a, a Canon digital camera or an iPhone from a, an old iPhone model, maybe iPhone 7 or something. Um, but other than that, the graphics are really good. The textures are good. The lighting seems to be quite bright, I have to admit, inside though. So I think the lighting, the contrast, that's maybe, you know, some of the things that have been kind of omitted so the atmosphere feels a bit more bland a bit more flat but other than that you know pretty good textures are there um, not too bad i would say 60 percent 70 percent of the textures are there once you're inside you definitely feel quite immersed in there um, and the jagged edges don't really bother me that much but they are quite a few that is quite true so that is the um, you know the the pros and cons of using airlink but i think for people who have never tried airlink before are going to be very very pleasantly surprised and just feel very immersed just really feel like they're having a good time and really wonder whether it's really worth to get virtual desktop because i'm really asking myself that question right now but of course there are pros and cons and you're gonna to have to hit the notification bell after you subscribe to find out whether you should definitely be purchasing uh, virtual desktop and why you should purchase virtual desktop of course versus using airlink as there are some undoubtedly uh reasons as to why you should purchase virtual desktop and not use the free airlink but as i said this is pretty pretty good i must admit so seven out of ten a good seven seven point five out of ten all right, so now I just wanted to show you guys, before we go inside of Half-Life, like, Half-Life, Alex, excuse me, just want to show you the actual settings I'm using in Super Sampling in Steam VR, uh, and also the home of Steam VR itself. You could pretty, pretty much see that everything looks pretty sharp, pretty clear. There's no latency, although I did notice a little bit of, um, let's say, uh, what's it called? Um, you know, the, the little, little things, 
the, the, the screen door effect. So there is a tiny, teeny, teeny, inchy bit of screen door effect inside of the SteamVR Home. And you can see also all the various different uh, lines that are jagged around the actual uh, you know, frames and everything. And I just wanted to show you also um, the, so the super sampling uh, actual um, settings that we're using for all the various different apps, not just for Half-Life Alyx uh, or SteamVR Home or for um, super hot. So the custom resolution multiplier that I'm using is actually 2528 by 2740, which is higher than the recommended for uh, the super the sampling resolution of um, you know of of, of of the MetaQuest 3. So we're actually bumping it up, and as you can tell, there isn't that much. Um, you know, in the game of super hot anyway, there isn't that much issues in terms of latency or, or, or lagging of any kind. And here we're now inside of Half-Life Alyx. And again, you can tell that the, the, the actual graphics are really beautiful. Just that there are jagged edges here and there. You can definitely tell the jagged edges. All the recordings, by the way, here are not from my screen on the PC. These are from inside of the actual Quest 3 itself. So no cheating, no nothing here. Everything is purely from the headset itself. And you know, it just looks really nice. I mean, again, most of the textures are here. Writing here is pretty good. The latency is really, really good. Uh, doing a heart here to say, I love VR Essentials community members, of course. And it's just really, really amazing in terms of, you know, what you can really do. There's no lagging, there's no, just everything seems to be okay. And you can really tell, I mean, we're pretty, we're pretty up close here on the window. We can see the textures, the, the dirt on the window itself the hands. I mean, again, it looks pretty flat to me. There is, seems to be some kind of depth that, that is kind of missing a little bit. Um, that would be my, you know, take on what I feel I experience in there. And also, again, you can see the jagged edges here as we go down the actual tunnel. Uh, but again, when you open the door, there's no lagging. The animation of the bad guys who come here uh, are pretty good as well. Um, now, also, by the way, in terms of the audio, there's no issues with the audio whatsoever. The audio works perfectly fine. There's no crackling of the audio. There's no audio stopping, starting, um, or you know any defects of any kind when I listen to the actual uh, audio of the animation or the soundtrack or all these kind of things. But for the purpose of today's video, of course, I did have to switch off the audio because I don't want the copyright to be flagged. And by the way, we are running at ultra high fidelity, even though my computer at the beginning, before I started the Half-Life Alyx game, did say when I started, it was originally at high, did say that, you know, the graphics were kind of supposed to be too high and we would have some issues uh, perhaps, but you know, I just, you know, I'm a DJ and I like to experiment. So I did put them on ultra high. So far, no issues. I played the game for a little, you know, 45 minutes or so. And I have to admit that I didn't have any issues whatsoever. The settings that I use are on continuous, which allows me to be continuous and do blinking or, or teleportation at the same time. And again, here, as I'm talking to the lady, you can tell that the, you know, there seems to be some depth map missing here. It seems a little bit flat. The lighting, the environment seems a little bit flat. I think that's really, you know, what is lacking in terms of when you're using the air link. And do hit the notification bell again, guys, as I will be using, um, you know, virtual desktop and showing you the differences as to why you may want to purchase virtual desktop, of course. But there's no latency in, you know, like ghosting of the animation. The animation is very fluid. Uh, you can see the people behind walking. There's no blurriness, there's no... Everything is just absolutely clear, absolutely great. The lighting's fantastic. The textures on the walls are fantastic. The reflections are fantastic. Just the jagged edges are, you know, you can definitely see some jagged edges here and there. But other than that, guys, honestly speaking, you know, there's good atmosphere. You really do feel like you're immersed inside. Um, you know, it's really really quite good. In terms of the controllers and the latency there, the tracking, there's no issues with the tracking. I was playing inside a very dim lit area inside of my living room, uh, which is why you can't see me on the actual uh, recording itself, because I didn't want to record my living room. But honestly, you know, even though the lighting was very dim, I just didn't have any... I mean, look at this, it's beautiful as the ship passes by with the birds there, and you can see the sun in the, you know, above the roof. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing. 
Uh, and then here we open up and then we go inside. So yeah, so other than the actual guardian, you know, that shows up here and there, that's the only thing I wish didn't have to show up so far. So maybe there's a way to adjust that. Do leave a comment below, guys. Let me know if there's a way to adjust the guardian sensitivity as I'd love to get your feedback. But what do you guys think of this? What do you think of the animation? What do you think of everything that you see here? Um, because, yeah, okay, here I'm bumping it up to 200 Mbps, by the way, just to show you a little bit the differences. And it does kind of show up a little bit clearer, but it doesn't seem to be that noticeable compared to 185 Mbps. Uh, but yeah, there you go, guys. I mean, absolutely fantastic. What do you think? Leave a comment below, everybody. Love to hear your thoughts. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed today's video, which is all about the MetaQuest 3 Airlink. Whew using PCVR, as you could tell, it really, really, honestly speaking, I was very surprised because I read so many different reviews on Reddit, on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube, everywhere, and a lot of people are saying, well, it's not that good, it's not there. But honestly speaking, I was actually personally taken by surprise. I thought the compression wasn't too bad at all. It's just that it feels more digital, digitalized, so they managed to get rid of all the latency stuff and all the little noise and specs, but um, you know, again, around the edges, there are some jagged edges here and there, a little bit of compromises, even though we are using the ATX uh, Wi-Fi 6 router and I was positioned right, right next to the router, everybody. I didn't even do a video sitting here in the studio where we're 10 meters away with a wall and a door in between because honestly speaking, it doesn't work great. It really doesn't great, work great. Uh, the graphics are really poor and I think this is something to talk about with virtual desktop as they have a better reach uh, in terms of uh, waves that they can capture. But also, of course, if you have a Wi-Fi mesh, that means two Wi-Fis, two routers, one over there, one here, uh, and then they can talk to each other or you can link them up with a cable or something, then you know, then you, you might be able to have a good, decent Wi-Fi if you're not right next to the router itself. And do make sure that your computer, by the way, does have a, a CAT6 or CAT7 or CAT8 um, you know, uh, cable that is plugged in directly in the Ethernet of your computer as this is a requirement to make sure that, of course, the data from the computer gets sent to the MetaQuest 3 as perfectly as possible. All right, guys, smash the likes. Hope you enjoyed today's video, which is, by the way, sponsored by Viber, uh, sorry, Zyber. So do go and check them out. They have a whole heap of different accessories for the MetaQuest 3, and you can enjoy up to 15% discount, 1.5, using the promo code VR essentials they got a whole heap of things from the strap to the to a neck thing that you put which is supposed to be like a power bank and accessories and things to be able to play walkabout mini golf and golf plus and all these kind of things inside of vr so do go and check them out everybody link in the description below you got to click that link and then you can use the vr essentials promo code until next time smash the like so more people can discover today's video and also hit the notification bell for plenty of more juicy videos coming very soon all right guys until next time take it easy bye 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 bye